Hello and happy Tuesday. I hope that you enjoyed our story from yesterday. Today we're going to read another story that is a story we read before. It's a familiar read. Today that story is Daisy Comes Home. And in this story there's a girl named May May. And May May has the best hens and chickens in the whole country of China. But one of the chickens, Daisy, doesn't have the best situation with some of the other hens. And so she decides to go off on her own. I bet that was pretty scary for her. Let's read to find out what happens when Daisy comes home. Look over the garden wall and you will see the six happiest hens in China. They live in May May's sandy yard by the Li River where they lay brown eggs every day for May May to sell at the market. But it is not always that way. Once upon a time, the smallest hen, the one that May May calls Daisy, was picked on by all the others. This is hard to imagine because May May was known far and wide for her happy hens. She gave them treats, she put fresh hay in their nests, she gave them baths when they fell in black mud, and when she called goo goo goo, all the hens would run as fast as their legs could carry them. Even May May's eggs baskets were painted with big red characters that read happy hens, and she tried to make it so. But every night, when it was time to roost in the hen house, the other hens picked on Daisy. They fluffed up their feathers and cr crowded her off the perch. They jostled her until peck, one of the others pushed her and thump, off she fell. That wasn't very nice. Then the hens tucked their heads into their feathers and went to sleep, while poor little Daisy was stuck below on the damp mud floor, shivering and cold until morning. Gee, what did Daisy ever do to them? One day it rained all day and the hens stayed inside. When it got dark, they flew up to their perch, except for Daisy. She had had enough of pushy hens and cold, damp floor. She went outside to find a place to spend the night. Down on the riverbank, she spied one of the market baskets. She snuggled in and fluffed up her feathers to stay warm. Daisy was sleeping and didn't see the river creeping up the bank from all the rain. And when the water reached her happy hen's basket, she didn't feel it float into the river. Uh-oh. She didn't mean to leave, did she? She just tried to make the best of her situation. She tried to transform that negativity. But it didn't really work out for her, did it? Her basket floated away. But when the basket started tipping and bobbing, Daisy woke up. She peeked out and saw a watery world all around her. The sandy yard, the garden wall, and May May's farmhouse looked smaller and smaller as the current carried her down the river. Finally, the basket bumped against a stone jetty where a houseboat was tied up. Scratch, scratch, scratch the basket as the river waves pushed it against the sharp rocks. Oh man. She's got these sharp rocks. I wonder what's going to happen. A dog was sitting up on the deck of the houseboat. When he saw the plump hen bobbing in the basket, he barked and scrambled toward her. Oh my gosh, he wants to eat her. Daisy scocked and pecked and beat the air with her wings. It was enough to tip the basket off the rocks, and she floated away just in time. Dawn broke over the Goo Mountains as the basket drifted along the river. Branches brushed against it, fish swam silently by, and blurred birds flew overhead. Suddenly, Daisy felt a thump. Daisy looked up and saw two big horns and a pair of surprised eyes looking down at her. The basket had drifted to the legs of a great big water buffalo taking a morning drink. The buffalo snorted loudly, scaring Daisy. She flew forward and nipped his furry muzzle and flapped and flapped her wings. Daisy scared the water buffalo. Can you believe that? A little hen scared a big water buffalo. He turned and galloped up the bank, scattering the ducks as he ran. 
His splashes made waves that carried the basket back into the middle of the river. Daisy traveled along all day until her basket was hooked by the roots of a banyan tree where a troop of red-tailed monkeys lived. Wow, she's traveled everywhere. She got stuck on the rock with a dog, the water buffalo, and now some monkeys. The curious monkeys eyed Daisy and climbed down for a closer look. Daisy froze as one monkey crept up to the basket and reached in. Daisy flapped and pecked and nipped and squawked. The startled monkeys pushed the basket away. It broke loose from the tree and floated on down the river. Daisy wondered what would happen next. Me too. Up ahead, Daisy saw a fisherman with Cormans driving all around the bamboo boat. They were catching fish and taking them to him for a reward. The fisherman felt a soft bump behind him. Thinking it was a Cormant, he reached back and grabbed. How surprised he was that he saw he was holding a head instead. Finders keepers, he exclaimed. Uh-oh, not a good idea. Little fish, big fish, silver fish, white fish. That's what I sell at the market. But today I will have this tender young chicken. He put a net over the basket and headed to the shore with poor Daisy inside. Oh no, he's going to take Daisy to the market and sell her. But it's not his to sell. Oh, here's May May. At home, May May had looked all around all day and all night for her little Daisy. She wasn't in the hen house. She wasn't behind the farmhouse. She couldn't fly over the wall. Where is she? May May wondered all the time about what had happened to Daisy. Finally, she knew that she had to go to the market. With a sad feeling, she packed her eggs in their basket and started on her way. As the basket swung back and forth, the red characters on the side of her basket made May May feel sadder and sadder. Happy hens, she said to herself. But what about my Daisy? Where is she? At the market, May May found a place and arranged the eggs in clean, sweet-smelling straw. All morning, shoppers brought her fresh brown eggs. But she couldn't stop thinking about her lost little hen. May May heard a voice calling to her. It was her friend Zhang yelling from the back of a bike cart. A fisherman has a happy hen's basket, he shouted. Who's in that happy hen's basket? It's Daisy. <laughs> what? She called, not understanding what he was saying. A happy hen's basket, he repeated. You'd better hurry because he's showing off what's inside. Daisy! May May exclaimed. May May raced to where the fish were sold. There was Daisy, beautiful and plump in her basket, surrounded by a crowd, all wanting to buy her. That's my hen! She cried to the fisherman, but his face was like stone. She pointed to the red characters on the basket. Happy hens, she said. The fisherman crossed his arms. Finders keepers, he growled and turned away to sell Daisy. May May was about to leave, but her eyes rested on those characters. Happy hens. All she could think about was Daisy in a cooking pot. She squeezed her eyes shut and clenched her fist. She had to do something. She was not going to let this guy just get away with that. Goo, 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 she called at the top of her voice. And when Daisy heard that call, she answered it the way she had every day of her life. She rose up and threw herself against the basket, tipping it over. She ran toward her friend May May as fast as her legs could. Daisy flew into May May's shoulder and off they went, running back to get May May's baskets and go home. The fisherman ran after them, furious. Stop, he yelled at May May. That's my hen. Finders keepers, May May called over her shoulder. And with Daisy clinging to her, she ran and didn't stop until she was safely home. That night, as the sun went down, Daisy took a place on the roost. One, when one of the big hens fluffed up her wings and spread out, expecting Daisy to fall off the perch like always, Daisy flapped her wings. I learned that from a boat dog, she clucked. Another hen tried to tip her off, 
and she pushed right back. I scared a water buffalo like that, she squawked. Another hen jostled her, peck, 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 peck. Daisy kept her place on the perch and beat the air with her wings. She remembered the monkey and she pecked and flapped all over again. That was when the hens gave Daisy a place of her own. The lap, lap, lap of the river made a peaceful nighttime song. No bumbling, no jostling, no fussing around. Just six happy hens, their heads tucked into their feathers, high and warm and safe together. And that's the end of our story. So in this story, Daisy went on this adventure and she learned on this adventure something very important and it ended up helping her when she came back home. So I want you to think about your question for today. What does Daisy learn when she is at the river? Think about what that means. What did she learn on this adventure on the river? Once you've answered that question, I want you to read on Raz Kids for 20 or 30 minutes, and then answer that same question again from the stories that you read on your own. What are your characters learning? I'll see you tomorrow.